Um, excuse me, what are you? Wait, excuse me, what are you doing? What? Oh, that's my garbage! Give that back! Oi! Oi, give that back! What are you doing? Oi, give that back! How are you going? Today, I'm going to be doing a garbage challenge, which I think I'm going to be pretty good at because everything I make kind of looks like garbage anyway. And I'm going to be doing this as a collaboration with a man that needs no introduction. Hey man, what's up? How you doing? Good, yeah. good to hear from you. Yeah, good man, good man. You ready to do this? Yeah, dude, I'm really excited. Um, do you want to introduce me to your viewers or something? Ooh, I kind of, kind of told them that you don't need an introduction. Yeah? That's, that's cool. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Anyways, um, moving on. What what do you what do you want to do for the rules? How well, do... I was thinking because we've said we we're going to do a garbage challenge, we kind of have to kind of keep it to actually using real garbage. So you can't like get a jet engine or like an electric motor and put that in your bin and say that that's garbage. It has to be kind of socially accepted that this is just general rubbish. And I was sure. also thinking because you're actually really good at making things, like you've got a CNC machine and stuff like that. Maybe you need a handicap, like you could blindfold your yourself or maybe cut off a foot or something like that cut off a no no I'm not, I'm what about that. something what about something smaller like just a, a finger or something like that uh, no dude that's that's we, really messed up i'm not no, doing that we, we have to make it even though you know you just like you just cut off a little finger just a little one you've got dude i'm just, i don't know where this is going but I'm just not really feeling comfortable with the whole... No, come on. Like, they, they, they used to do it a lot in the olden times just to make it even, you know? You just you just cut off one finger. Otherwise, it's not going to be a fair competition. The, the olden times? I'm not cutting off a finger. This is, I'm not agreeing to this. this so once Joel agreed to cut off his finger, it was time to start the challenge. And we are going to see who can create the best thing out of garbage. And I say best in a very subjective way. You, the viewer, get to choose what best even means. It could be because you like the pumpkin in the corner of my video, or you think that Joel has a nice hat. Also, I want to know who has the better looking garbage, as that is something I pride myself in. So let's start by taking a look what's in my bin. And for some reason, I'm feeling a bit nervous after I just talked up how good looking my trash is. I mean, I feel like I'm showing you something very personal. And I can't really use any of this as it's just stuff we haven't recycled properly and food scraps, unless I kind of just make a bad meal or something. All right, so on to my recycling, which is just full of newspapers. 12 down, the inability to stay focused on a task. Oh, distracted. Ah, milk bottles. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna do something with milk bottles. Uh, mostly because my family drinks a lot of milk. Can you believe we go through this many milk bottles in just one hour? Give me another one, I'm on a roll. And there is something I've been wanting to try for a while, and it's just so lucky I happen to be hoarding milk bottles for the past two months. Definitely not in preparation for this challenge. So my plan is to get the milk bottles and attempt to melt them down into big blocks, which I can then shape into like a bowl or a knife, or a frisbee. So let's do this, and I'm gonna start by cutting up the bottles into lots of small pieces. And I still can't really believe that all these bottles contain the liquid from cow titties. Thank you so much, cows. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a small test to see how the plastic actually melts down. And I'm gonna to attempt to melt it down in the oven. Now apparently, when the HDPE is heated at low temperatures, it doesn't produce any toxic fumes or anything, which is why I'm risking my safety and my family's safety by doing it in the oven. Now, after adding more plastic, I created this plastic blob, which when it hardened, kind of looks a bit like an egg, which isn't really usable unless I pretend that this is what I want. So I'm gonna give it a paint job and make it look real. And 12 hours later, we have a big, delicious egg. Can you tell which one is real? I can't. <laughs> There you go. The first useful thing I made from garbage is food. All right, so now I'm gonna try a method which should hopefully involve less cancer and less eggs and allow me to get a big workable piece of plastic. Apparently a great way to heat the plastic up is in a sandwich press because you can get uniform heating from the top and bottom and then you can use the press as a press and let it dry in there. If you let it dry without a press, the plastic warps and then when it cools down, you get a big piece of bent plastic which is unusable. So I'm going to cut up a bunch more bottles and try get a usable piece. And I can never seem to buy plastic gloves big enough for my stupid fat hands. 
And I know this sounds like a joke, but it really isn't. I live in constant fear that somebody is gonna pass me a normal sized object that is suddenly gonna transform into a miniature model in my hands, making me look like a freak. So I'm gonna to attempt to make this like a cake, layer by layer. So I'm gonna add one layer and then let that melt down. Then I'm gonna add another layer and let that melt down. And it's probably clear by now that I've never made a cake before. I made brownies once, but I don't really talk about that. So then I'm gonna to attempt to fold it over and get all the bubbles out. And these plastic gloves are a horrible idea. They do nothing against the heat. And they stay really hot. And I don't know why I'm still using them. Then I decide to brown the plastic intentionally to give it a bit of flavor and then add some blue bottle caps to make it pretty. Now I'm gonna give it one final squeeze, turn off the sandwich press, then clamp it up and leave it to dry. And then hopefully we get a nice flat piece of egg-free plastic. And now that it's cool, let's take a look. And it looks pretty good. Besides the fact I somehow managed to get sawdust inside the plastic, or actually maybe it's burnt milk. It smells kind of milky. It smells kind of delicious, actually. But it should still work. And this is really strong plastic. I was not expecting so much strength from milk. So the first thing I'm gonna to attempt to make is a bread knife. And I'm gonna be cutting it out on my little old bandsaw. And I don't know what it is about this bandsaw, but it really turns me on. Maybe it's its age. Or maybe it's its name. Or maybe it's the fact that it's still working, even though it should just give up and die. And I'm sure if this bandsaw could talk, it would have some amazing stories like that time it cut that thing that one time. But regardless of the reason, it is definitely my favorite tool in the house. All right, so the knife is done. And I'm gonna file it down and find an excuse to use my grinder so it doesn't feel bad. All right, so this is how the knife turned out, which looks pretty good, besides the fact that it has dirt embedded in it. So I'm going to attempt to make one more thing to redeem myself. And I also need to milk that YouTube watch time. And the thing I'm going to try and make is a plastic bowl. And I figured it's just a slightly not flat surface, which I will end up doing by accident. So it can't be that hard. And I'm going to try very hard to make it pretty this time. So I found this beautiful blue HDPE laundry container, which I was way too excited to find. Oh, yes. I kind of wonder how they made it blue. Maybe blue dinosaurs, maybe? And I'm gonna repeat the same process, making sure to burn myself in a very methodical way. Oh, God. And the great thing about wearing plastic gloves and getting burnt is once you feel the heat, it is too late to stop it. And the gloves are already hot and they'll stick to you and burn you. So then once I've heated it up, I'm gonna clamp it in between these two bowls and hopefully it will take the shape. And I never have a proper plan. In my head, I imagined it flopping beautifully onto the bowl and then me elegantly closing it up in the press in a couple of seconds. But in fact, it just took a lot longer and I burnt myself again and then I couldn't get enough pressure on it in time to make it take the shape. And it didn't work properly. So I'm gonna try again. Round two. Nice. And that worked really, really well besides the part where I get cancer in two years. And round three. And every time I do this, I'm getting more and more scared. I feel like I'm making something out of napalm. One slip and it'll stick to me and burn my whole body off. But this one turned out pretty nice and it looks a bit like a bowl, although it is a little wrinkly. It looks a bit like a scrotum. So I'm just gonna clean it up and polish it to make it look a little less scrotumy. And now that I've sanded it and inhaled my fair share of plastic, I'm gonna try and polish it in a way that could potentially ruin the whole bowl by placing it over an open flame, which I'm hoping is going to remelt the surface, which will mean it'll be nice and flat and shiny. But I don't really know because I've never tried this. And that worked out really well. The bowl looks way better than the knife. It almost looks as though it's made out of blue marble or porcelain or something, and I'm pretty happy and relieved. I thought for a moment I was just going to be stuck with a scrotum bowl. And I'm going to stop saying scrotum. 
So let's go try my new plastic utensils out. And the knife barely cuts bread. But the bowl does manage to hold bread, which is pretty amazing and much better than my other bowls. Also, this bowl makes a nice bowl holder. It's kind of like a stubby holder, but for bowls, a bowl holder. So now that I've wasted enough of your precious time, go head over to Joel's channel and subscribe to him. He is actually amazing at making things and he doesn't burn himself the whole time. And then while you're over there, go take a look at his garbage challenge and decide who wins and then let us know in the comments. Also, if you do comment that Joel wins and your comment disappears, I just thought you should know that YouTube has been acting really weird and glitchy recently. It is really something they need to sort out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and check out some of my other stuff.